Hello and welcome to Teaching Bio. Today we're going to be looking at the first required practical for AQA A-level biology and that is the effect of a variable in enzyme action. So the factors that they could ask in the exam are temperature, pH, enzyme concentration, substrate concentration or the use of an inhibitor. So for temperature, um, it's just a simple concept and it's that when the temperature increases it means that there's more kinetic energy therefore there's a faster rate of reaction because there are more enzyme substrate complex. Okay, so these are the key terms you need to be using in the exam. But if it passes the optimum temperature of an enzyme, therefore meaning that the temperature is too high, hydrogen bonds and ionic interactions in the tertiary structure, okay, break. And therefore this distorts the active site because that is the tertiary structure and therefore it's no longer complementary, okay. Therefore, fewer enzyme substrate complexes will form and the enzyme will denature. Um, for pH, the idea of denaturing also follows and it's that uh, whether there's a low pH, the protons because obviously low ph means it's acidic the protons will distort the ionic interactions okay that's what's going to be distorted the ionic interactions in the tertiary structure okay which therefore distorts the active site so it's no longer complementary okay to um the substrate therefore there are fewer enzyme substrate complexes however this actually doesn't completely change the structure because it is reversible and therefore it can return back to its functional active site. So if, for example, they asked a question where they said that they added some sort of acid and that um, uh, that caused the rate of reaction to decrease, how would the student rectify this? Well, they could probably add a base or add, you know, sodium hydrogen carbonate or some sort of alkali. Therefore, that will raise the pH back to being neutral. Therefore, the enzyme will not... Um, so the, the rate of the reaction will continue to increase and more enzyme substrate complexes can form. So the key here is that this, unlike temperature, is actually reversible. The other factor is enzyme concentration. And um, for this, it's just that, you know, if it makes sense that there's more enzyme, that means that there's more enzyme substrate complexes, therefore the rate of reaction increases, okay? So high enzyme concentration means the rate of reaction increases due to more enzyme substrate complexes. However, eventually, if you can, if you think about this as a graph, the rate will start to plateau, okay? It'll start to flatten out because the substrate will run out, okay? You might have tons and tons of enzymes, but there's no substrate for the enzyme to combine to. Therefore, the rate will obviously plateau and there'll be no more enzyme substrate complexes, okay? We've also got substrate concentration. And when you have high substrate concentrations, it, therefore, the rate of reaction will increase because of the fact that there's more enzyme substrate complexes that can be formed. However, Similar to enzyme concentration, the graph looks similar, the same, and the rate will plateau, okay? It'll um, flatten because all the active sites are saturated, okay? What that means is that on the enzyme, the active site is full. It's already occupied by another substrate molecule, so nothing can fit to the active site, okay? We can also use inhibitors, okay? And there's two types you need to know, and they are competitive and non-competitive inhibitors, okay? The way that competitive inhibitors work is that they are complementary to the substrate therefore they are complementary to the active site so they compete for the active site as they are complementary at each substrate concentration okay that is a nice way to think the exam at each substrate concentration therefore because they're competing at each concentration there is a slower rate of reaction okay however Again, it will start to plateau, but it will plateau at the same point if we think about this as a graph because the active site of the enzyme is not changed. The enzyme is still functional and eventually it will combine with the substrate once the inhibitor sort of detached from it and it's formed the enzyme inhibitor complex, okay? The enzyme still remains functional because the active site, i.e. the tertiary structure, is not changed because the hydrogen bonds and ionic bonds and sulfide bridges are not changed, okay? Non-competitive inhibitors, however, bind to the allosteric site, and all that is is a site that is not the active site. And therefore, because they bind to the allosteric site, that alters the tertiary structure, okay? Because of, you know, these extra bonds that have been thrown in with messing about with hydrogen bonds, only interactions, we're affecting the polarity and the charge of um, the, ac the active site. And therefore, that slows down the rate of enzyme substrate complexes. Therefore, there are no more enzymes that are complementary to the substrate no more active sites that are complementary to substrate, so they cannot bind, okay? So non-functional eventually. So they cannot bind to the substrate, okay? So in terms of how you can actually see these reactions happening, a lot of reactions that involve a rate of reaction involve a color change because that helps you to know when a reaction has happened. 
So milk contains proteins, okay, and that can be hydrolyzed by protease. And what will happen to the milk solution is that it will become clear as it's being hydrolyzed. Likewise, you can use this idea of a um, thingy, an X, okay, the appearing X, okay. So in a cloudy milk solution, you can put an X on the other side of the test tube. You won't be able to see the X because it's cloudy. However, as the uh, reaction happens, because all the protease is being hydrolyzed, um, it, the milk is becoming uh, less cloudy and therefore clearer. So you can draw the X on the side, okay. You always need to compare any sort of color change or any sort of reaction like this to one that has already changed okay so this is your comparison point this is a benchmark and therefore you make comparisons using that okay and obviously rate the way to calculate rates you do concentration divided by time so these are some common questions that they ask that i've been through sort of several papers and seen okay so one of the common questions is why should smaller intervals be used okay on a graph or whatever sort of reaction is being done and the reason for that is it means that there's greater accuracy, therefore clearer comparisons, okay? They love the word comparisons. Okay, and then another common question is how can temperature be checked, okay? And the way in which you check the temperature is by taking several readings every two to three minutes, okay? Again, you know, if they ask, you know, how can pH be checked, it's the same concept. It's to take it every two to three minutes, okay? Several readings every two to three minutes pH using a pH meter or a pH probe and for temperature using a thermometer. Um, likewise, for temperature, how can it be controlled and altered? Um, the temperature can be controlled using a thermostatically controlled water bath slash thermometer. And the way in which the temperature can be controlled is this way. And the way in which it can be altered is by the addition of cool water from a tap or dis distilled water from a bottle or hot water from the kettle. Okay, so it's important to make sure that the temperature is kept constant at whatever temperature you're assessing for. What is a color standard? So this is what we've just looked at before. It's the one that has already changed, okay? And this is what the reference point in benchmark is for comparisons, okay? Comparisons is really, really important to say here. Um, some questions also ask um, to explain why sort of you leave the test tubes containing a solution in the enzyme um, for, you know, X number of minutes. And there is a nice way to say this, and it's that it allows the test tubes to equilibrate, okay? So that the temperature of the water bath is actually the same as the test tubes. So the thermometer will be placed in the water bath, obviously, and they you'd measure the temperature of the water bath. Make sure, you know, you check it every several readings every two to three minutes. You change it, addition of hot water, cold water, and you've got to make sure that the temperature of the test tube is the same as the temperature of the water bath, which is why you leave it to equilibrate for a few minutes, okay? The question that can be asked is if you are given this sort of graph here um, with a graph of rate of enzyme action and uh, against pH, so pH on the x-axis, rate of enzyme action on the y, rate of enzyme action on the y-axis. Um, so obviously this is the common curve. You should know what each of the graphs look like, each of the factors that affect it. And it says to describe how to calculate from a graph of pH against rate, the pH range of which the activity of an enzyme is over 50% of its maximum. So find the maximum point, the peak of the bell curve, find 50% and read down and find the range. OK, so the range is 7 to 11. So at that range, that's when the enzyme activity is over 50% of its maximum. So they could change 50% to, you know, 25% or 75%, but it's the same process. And you can get the range and they might ask you to, you know, explain sort of the concept behind that and to explain the shape of the curve, which we've looked at. Low pH is its protons, you know, changing the ionic structure, um, ionic interactions and uh, hydrogen bonds in the tertiary structure, therefore changes the active sites as normally complementary. OK, so an application question, so this is the one involving inhibitors, is that an enzyme controlled reaction is inhibited by substance X. Suggest a simple way in which you could tell whether substance X was competitive or non-competitive, OK? And the way in which you do this is that you would add more substrate, OK? That is the way you check by adding more substrate or increasing the substrate concentration. Another way to say it. Why? If it was a competitive inhibitor, okay, sorry, if it was a non-competitive inhibitor, the rate of reaction will not continue because the active site has been altered. So no matter how much substrate you chuck into the reaction, there will be no change. Okay, you can put bucket loads of substrate in, there will be no change to the reaction because the active site is altered because of a non-competitive inhibitor binding to the allosteric site, altering the tertiary structure. If it's a competitive inhibitor, the rate of reaction will increase because if you've got more substrate, there's more of a probability that the substrate will bind rather than the inhibitor. And therefore, um, the substrate will compete with the competitive inhibitor. 
and bind to the active site, therefore there's more enzyme-substrate complexes and therefore the rate of reaction will increase.